Does anyone know why Trader Joe's has so much pulp in their V8 clone vegetable juice? It's kind of nasty. It has a sting to it, like if I went to a vegan uh, juice bar and they made it fresh. Uh, I'm against the prices the, these juice bars charge. I mean, come on. Come on, for three bucks, and that's still over charging in my opinion, but for three bucks I can go to Kmart, Trader Joe's, Smith's, Albertson's, whatever, a grocery store, and I can go ahead and get the same thing they're hawking. Well, not fresh, I can get it. I can get it for three to four bucks, depending on size and brand. Uh, don't buy Mott's. They make the absolute worst vegetable juice. Trader Joe's probably has the healthiest. And I want to address something. Um, I don't know who, or I don't know, my views tell me different, so I don't know who. Uh, there's some devices that don't register views on my videos. Uh, like uh, if someone watches on a Wii or a 3DS, for instance. So anyway, someone shot me an email, and uh, why I don't go to church, and it's pretty simple. Uh, the Pope's a hypocrite, so I won't go. Yeah, there, that's it. <laughs> But uh, a more better topic uh, for me. I, I almost decided that I was going to go full on to um, politics. But I figured um, Razor Fist, who's the Rageaholic, he's got that completely covered. And he has a good YouTube channel, so I recommend going ahead and visiting it. He also has some pretty funny tweets and stuff. And for the opposite of uh, Razor Fist, there's Maddox. Uh, also on the... Uh, on the YouTube, on the YouTube. America's watching YouTube. And that brings me to my point, though. Maddox, Razor Fist, Alpha Omega Sin, Sega CD Universe, Angry Video Game Nerd, Pat Man S Punk, Nostalgia Critic, Oliver Harper, Rob Dyke, uh, Kaylee Elise, Rainbot, Force 13, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm just picking YouTubers off the top of my head. I don't know who these big YouTubers are other than PewDiePie because he's the only one I've heard of. I haven't seen, um, I think I've seen one or two videos by him, and I don't know anyone else. Um, somebody kept saying I'm related to Mark Pilar or somebody by that name. I don't know that person. I don't know who these big YouTubers are. Uh, they don't exist to me, because at YouTube, it's what I want to watch. I like to watch uh, weather patterns. I like to watch train wrecks. They like to watch uh, documentaries on plane crashes. Apparently, that's the big trendy thing right now. I like to watch earthquake and tsunami videos. Why am I going here? Well, there used to be a time when, before cable, actually that broadcast television actually covered all these topics or the magazines covered these topics in great depth. 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 Excuse me. Depth. I once read a 1957 edition of Encyclopedia Americana. Apparently, I, I never heard of this encyclopedia until I was the age of 16. And I read it cover to cover. Volume, each volume. It, I don't know how many volumes. And I had a... Um, the one thing I didn't read was... No, I went through the index or appendix or whatever it's called at the end of the encyclopedia set, the last volume. or the, It comes after the letter Z or whatever. Um, the, they would have entire reprintings of treaties and state constitutions and laws and detailed essays and so forth and so on. And I found it fascinating. And it probably... The... 1957 set nearly 40 years after its publication because it took me a year or two to read it on top of everything else I was reading and doing and wow holy moly I mean it opened my eyes uh, a lot in the way people feel about um these news agencies like World Net Daily or or Infowars, they feel like their eyes have been opened. Uh, okay, if that's the way they feel, but there's a it, it leads to further reference. And when Wikipedia showed up, I 
I could read an article at Wikipedia and know right off the bat that something was wrong. So in the old days, there were detailed encyclopedias that had a wealth of information for the price of purchase or borrowing as a reference. Well, not really borrowing. Huh? Going to the library, your local library branch, and having an entire wealth of information at your fingertips. At least mine. But what happened over the last 20 years is these um, hardcore anti-American likes to steal money from the taxpayer bureaucrats came in and they sold off almost everything that a library had. There was, there's no harm for a public library to have multiple editions of an encyclopedia or multiple encyclopedias, multiple editions. Having almanacs, reference books, and other books that I can check out and everything. The library today, I go to Sahara West or the West Charleston libraries in Las Vegas, and they're 100% useless. They don't even have microfilm anymore, or microfiche, for me to go ahead and, and look up reference material, uh, the historical records. Now I understand that today those records have been probably heavily manipulated and are probably 90% dishonest because there's the way we live and then there's the what is actually captured and recorded and written. Um, at Wikipedia, one of the problems obviously, they're like, well, citation needed. Okay, now you have to have a reliable source. Oh, that's original research. Well, you know what, Wikipedia, fuck you and fuck it up your ass because what you deem a, a notable source is also original research. It's opinion based. It might be reporting or recording or illustrating something that has happened but it's not fact. Once it has become part of the memory of the collective being uh, the civilization of mankind uh, or civilizations of mankind it has now become uh, memory. I might say well this sky was turquoise today and you might say the sky is sapphire today. We are both correct and we're both wrong. The point is, we settle on a general conclusion. Blue. So, what does this have to do with broadcast television and, and subject matter and everything? Well, YouTube wouldn't necessarily have the success it does, nor would Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, Crunchyroll, and... Um, HBO Now, Showtime's app, Crackle to a degree. What happened, what absolutely happened, was they got complacent. They dropped the ball. They broke the law. The Supreme Court ruling states that the Hollywood 8 can never again own the means of distribution. Well, they thought that was distribution, well, yeah, distribution, no, wait, excuse me, own the means of exhibition, but that's what they've done, they've bought all of our networks, radio and television, and they're, they're fast moving on the internet, they're not allowed to have that, what they're allowed to have is, um, it's okay for, say, CBS as CBS is a 100% independent broadcaster. They're allowed to go ahead and um, they're allowed to distribute as a means of distribution content. In other words, under under the United States versus Paramount, 1942, CBS cannot actually produce anything in house including their news. It all has to be outsourced uh, and then brought in. Uh, ABC still does this, actually. ESPN on ABC um, is an independent company under exclusive contract to Disney. But that doesn't mean that they're out of the woods in my argument here. Uh, it's just that they're not supposed to own this distribution. So what they've done is they've homogenized and they only want to cooperate amongst themselves. They control 
allegedly they control the money, but then why are there so many damned logos when we go see a movie, right? Well, the, you know, that that's unclassy. I hated when that started. It started in late 96. Before late 96, it would be rare to ever see a production company uh, put their logo. You know what that, that putting a logo is? I'm going to say it. It's, it's like uh, someone making you read the... Uh, the tag in the back of your shirt when you go outside. <laughs> it's awkward and weird. Um, it's okay for their vanity plate. That's what it's called a TV trope. It's okay for their vanity plate to be the main distributor. But the other thing is by keeping it competitive, by keeping these companies competitive, um, if the movie companies don't own a network and don't own any cable networks, nothing, they own nothing. All they own is their studios, and then they give loans to production companies to subcontract, go ahead and create motion pictures and television shows. And they then go to a network. The network says, and we're going to put you at the 30 slots on Thursdays, and we're going to see how much we can get for that slot. That will determine your cost per episode. And that's what needs to be done. And it's supposed to be the sponsor gets to dictate what goes on the television and whether or not that brings in revenue to their product. That's how it's supposed to be. It's not. And that's what's killed television is they don't have any need to com compete anymore. Because then they bought all the cable channels. By bu buying all the cable channels... Um, I believe with the exception of MGM and Lionsgate, the other six control all the cable channels that are available. By having that, they have a subscriber base of um, whatever it is. Probably, realistically, there's probably 50 million uh, cable subscribers uh, on average. It probably fluctuates. I myself will never go back to cable, but there's people who go and get cable. Now, when I use cable, I am including all forms of pay TV. Including PlayStation View. Including satellite. So, don't think that when I say cable, I'm not counting those. I'm counting it all. And I, I think there's roughly about 50 million people. Um, I wouldn't get PlayStation View unless I bought a specific uh, Blu-ray player that had the app, because uh, or or a Roku-like device because I don't want to I don't want my PS4 playing videos all the time. Other than that, I don't really understand why they homogenize their product to the point of boredom. Fast and the Furious should never have gotten see. Or should legally blonde at that point. Cruel Intentions got made for TV or made for video sequels and stuff like that. And yeah, that's partially where the can of worms open, video rental. But overall, they've chased away their own audience. Uh, now, there are exceptions. Some people think AMC shows are the cat's meow. Uh, absolute trash, in my opinion. All of them. I don't really care for anything on AMC. You know, American movie classics. But um, I'm not, I'm not going to stop someone from watching it. And um, on Netflix, I've enjoyed a lot of shows produced by Netflix for Netflix, like House of Cards, um, Borgia, not the Showtime one, though I enjoyed that on Netflix as well. And there was a time when I subscribed to Showtime. Sometimes they'd play some funky movie, Showtime and HBO. And I'd be like, oh, wow, I haven't seen this movie in a while. Or they got the rights to this film. And, you know, I'd watch it three, four times. I do enjoy that. But, no, no, I, I, even Netflix and Hulu are about to lose my subscribership. Because they seem to be on YouTube all the time. Because it seems to me YouTube... YouTube seems to be the, the one doing everything right. And, uh... I, I don't know what to say about that. YouTube's got it down. 
I want someone to review the Death Wish movies humorously. Not only is Razor Fist there doing it, there's um, one guy, I forgot his name. He was making fun of Death Wish 2. He, like, at one point he called Death Wish 2 the quickening. Uh, there's this guy named Spoonie. He does funny things. So, yeah, I mean, I can find a whole bunch of people of varying quality on YouTube where you're listening to this right now on YouTube who who make it better than Hollywood ever made it. And then there's PBS. PBS would be the place where a lot of this YouTube stuff would belong. If I were to design a PBS schedule right now, um, first and foremost would be an absolute change in their daytime programming. I don't know what the deal is, but they're going to run commercials. It was up to me. I know the law says it has to be commercial free, but come on, let's get real here. That 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 Marxist dream don't fly. It has it's a bird with no feathers who's just boiled and its head chopped off. In order to make PBS profitable, gotta bring in the commercials. It can still be public television, but let's bring in the commercials, and then let's bring in stuff kids actually would like. What is so wrong with having something that's a half-hour commercial for toys? That the toys build imagination. Imagination builds critical thinking. Critical thinking builds the modern world. Why wouldn't anyone want critical thinking? Because the Marxists, who who are the fascists that they protest against, they they don't want people to have that critical thinking. Well, have some critical thinking. Pull up your skirt and run out there and get your balls kicked a few times to learn how not to get kicked in the balls and stop wearing that skirt. Put on a kilt. Flows better. So, why not go the route I'm talking about with PBS? Let's have some critical thinking. Let's bring back the Animaniacs for all I care. Let's bring back He-Man and G.I. Joe and Thundercats. Come on, let's do it. Let's have some anime. That's where it belongs. And on none of this this foofy crap, that sure hasn't done anything. I know people who will not let their kids watch the cartoons on PBS. I know daycares that won't tolerate it, and they'll go put on Nick Jr. or something like that. And then there's, um... Because I'm sticking to over the air here. You know, why... Why not have shows like the hell with the Antiques Roadshow and all this other shit that PBS has and um and uh I'm sorry I got a text message and people know I'm broadcasting and they, they do it anyways and I apologize to you, the listener. So I'm going back to beating uh, the PBS horse. Well, what can PBS... You know, what can they do? How would you like it if Rob Dyke did his Twisted Ten Seriously Strange Murder Mysteries on PBS, you know, at 10 p.m.? Think about that. What if Dark Five were these fun facts that ran? PBS. What if uh, Force 13, you know, had a little weather show on PBS? Who says that they have to stick to hours and stuff like that? Why not just go all out and break the rules to create new rules? That's what amendments are for. We do it in the Constitution. Why can't we do it in television? I've worked in television. My radical idea when I was managing a station, you know, two stations at the same time in Perum was to run the local news for 10 or 15 minutes because uh, truth be told there ain't no news well excuse me there isn't any news in a small town like Perot they have to go out of their way to find the news there's no reason to have the news to begin with 
that are something big, affiliate with Las Vegas and let them fill up the half hour. That's why there's a fluff piece at the end of news. Because they're trying to fill out a half an hour. That's why they started reporting on sports, though. That's been given up largely, um, except for local news. The news, which is plural for multiple new, the news is, is, is the old. And you know, there's no reason why I wake up and I need the morning news. No one watches the morning news that I know of. Uh, most of my generation are a bunch of dumb sheeple. Who are so stoned out of their mind because they worship the almighty marijuana because they're losers who, who are afraid of their own success and actually being something that nothing comes about it with them they don't watch the news they don't know anything to tell you the truth maybe if you you know come around I mean I can't speak for your town but I can speak for mine and that's what Las Vegas is full of, and it's sad. I would love, I would love to actually, you know, do something uh, productive out here. But and, I, and I'm looking at the generation as a whole. And it's like, why don't they want to be useful? So it goes right down to the television is not useful now. I've heard theories that television's the idiot box and it hypnotizes and it brainwashes. Well. If the television had nothing on but, let's say, uh, right-wing Christian content, ooh, what would happen? Well, I've seen this happen. What you get is a bunch of disconnected right-wing fools. Now, what happens if it has left-wing atheist content? Well, you get the same thing, a bunch of disconnected atheist fools. So which way does the television go? Well, Netflix figured it out. Hulu figured it out. Crunchyroll figured it out, Amazon figured it out, YouTube figured it out before anyone else. People just want to watch what they like to watch, the topics they like to watch, and let them watch it. If they want to watch a whole season, then let them do it. There's no way to fix television. Television is going to die. And that means then shows would have to compete to be on Netflix. Shows that have to be competing to be on Hulu if they want to be paid for shows, or they can make the content so outstanding that it goes to YouTube, they promote it, they say it's going to be on YouTube, and that you can watch it on YouTube. We're going to have ads, though, because it has to be paid for unless you're YouTube Red. These aren't, you know, we're a professional company going into YouTube making a sitcom or a drama, or even a motion picture, and we're putting it up on YouTube. It's just a matter of time before YouTube goes, well, wait a minute here. Now, I'm going to disclose right now. I hate YouTube. I hate Google. I don't make any money from any of this. No one's paying me to endorse them. Yet, I see that YouTube has the most potential to do this because it's accessible being accessible it is what it's all about being everywhere there's MXC on YouTube I know it's not legal or anything. I know it's a pirate doing it, but there's MXC on YouTube and then Hulu used to have MXC well, where do you think most people are watching MXC? Now, there is a company out there that figured this out. Do you know who that company is? MGM. With Pink Panther. There's an official Pink Panther channel that has almost every single Pink Panther cartoon ever made. And it's still uploading to this day because they made the Pink Panther in Panther. These are professional downloads. And they get so many views. Hundreds of thousands and the millions, depending on the particular Pink Panther episode. And they're all in the best quality possible. Damn near HD for the older stuff and HD for the newer stuff. That is the way to go. Bravo, MGM. Now, why can't other companies follow suit? What would be so wrong 
if Warner Brothers Domestic Television put Family Matters, Full House, Step by Step, Hanging with Mr. Cooper, right there on YouTube, in official channels. They're doing this with their music. And Bebo. Think about Bebo. Yes, this is the future of broadcasting. So I want to talk about something. Um, I want to talk about something that I've been wondering why YouTube went the way that maybe I've already addressed this, but I'm going to address it again. I feel like... Ugh. Okay. Once upon a time, after YouTube became YouTube, not in its original incarnation, which I think was a dating site. Excuse me while I wet my whistle here. Maybe one day you should ask me to explain what happened with Atari. Ah, whistle is wet. Alright. So, with YouTube, and this is what should have happened. It's sometime in the middle of 2005. YouTube has gone through its first transformation. It, it is now what we recognize as YouTube. Someone today who uses YouTube will be able to go back in time and use that version of YouTube. Time travel is not possible. Just want to tell people that. And don't argue with me on that point. I know it's impossible because I figured something out that physicists have the position of the Earth when you time travel. If you were to time travel right now and you wanted to go back 10 years to 2007, you would be out in the middle of space. <laughs> okay? Or something worse. You have to calculate the position of the Earth exactly to the immeasurable smallest part of time measurement, which we call a moment, which we call the present, which is actually in, in, impossible to measure. And that's how time travel can be achieved. I'm throwing it out there because I want some, some people to actually figure it out. So, 2005 Modern YouTube which has been YouTube ever since, shows up. I'm sure there was quirks and bugs and everything. There's still quirks, bugs, all kinds of problems. But this is YouTube as we know it. Flash video, everything. Google should go then and, you know, make an investment in either Macromedia or Adobe, whoever. I don't know if Adobe had bought Macromedia just yet, but let's say they did. But I think they did by this point. And they go ahead and they make an investment in Adobe so they can go ahead and make Flash better for Flash video. By doing that, they, YouTube, Google, well, YouTube, because Google hasn't bought them yet, but, you know, they go ahead with Google's money and say, you know, let's go ahead and get these broadcast companies, these Hollywood 8s right on here. Let's put every movie, let's digitize it, let's clean it up for them, let's pay for all of this content to come here. And then we'll sell dynamic ads, meaning that the ads should be tailored to the person's YouTube account and how they watch and what they what they watch. But make them unskippable, but no longer, no longer than a minute at the beginning. Then in every, you know, every ten or twenty minutes or something like that. I say every every ten minutes, another one minute ad or you know one minute space for ads until, and then you know, at the end of the program, another one, that they can't skip out of. Okay, what if they did this? And then for their TV shows, just put them up on there the next day. It's, it's not going to hurt. Now they can actually measure who's watching what. They also promote it on their shows. Hey, hey, watch our YouTube channel if you missed today's episode. They don't even have to bother with repeats and reruns. They can dump all of their content from these eight companies onto YouTube there would be no need for Hulu. Hulu was created as an answer to YouTube, not Netflix, as strange as that sounds. Hulu was created as an answer to YouTube. Because National Amusements sued YouTube over for $1 billion over clips from their shows being on YouTube. This isn't our actual reality. In this alternate reality, um, and I don't believe in multi- universe crap, by the way. Okay? <laughs> I, I just don't. There's no proof of it. And no, I don't believe in the so-called Mandela effect or anything like that either. Okay? That's all garbage made to distract you from actual happenings that people are trying to take over your life. 
but instead you're going to go and argue these points. You're going to argue which is the best track episode or whatever. Instead of doing something useful, which is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get ideas out here. I'm putting forth an idea right now that YouTube should have done this. That the Hollywood 8, okay, who's the 8? That's Universal, Disney, Warner, Sony, MGM, Lionsgate, National Amusements, who owns Paramount, and Fox should have went ahead and dumped all their content there, helped the smaller companies also, YouTube, not the Hollywood 8, get their content on there. All content's on there. Would that have led to the rise of things like James Roll for whatever? Um, yeah, be- because th- that still would have been put up there. It still would have been broadcast yourself, but it would have been like, we also got this stuff here. And then if you don't want commercials, they could have implemented something like YouTube Red right off the bat when this was going on. People like me would have jumped at it, and they could have charged a simple price of uh, $5 a month. No commercials. I can watch the programming whenever I feel like it. On-demand television, done right. Obviously, I can't work out the kinks and logistics. I'm just, you know, talking about the overall. They didn't do this. So, we do have an organized mess with Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, Amazon, Crunchyroll etc. And they're running scared because they're seeing their subscriber rates drop, the Hollywood 8 with their cable companies. Then MGM is laughing all the way to the bank because more people are watching the channels they own. This TV and me TV on over-the-air digital TV. But the problem is there's people who aren't buying televisions, or if they are, they're just watching... uh, They're not even buying devices to hook up to the TV unless it's a game system. And even that's dying. Yes. Yes. Everything related to the TV is dying. Look, I I, I don't want failure of any video game system out there. No matter who makes it. But unless it's a Coleco Chameleon for obvious reasons. See Pat the NES Punk for that. But I don't agree with everything Pat says in a lot of ways. Just throwing that out there so you know. However, however, um, well, well, let's take a look at that for a minute. I I don't believe the numbers I see reported on any of the game systems. And even I myself, I noticed about ten years ago, I was playing game systems less and less. I still play games, obviously. I mean, how else do I make one? So forth and so on, but um, kids today, um, only a handful of kids walk around with their game systems or they get game systems to play certain games. I just don't see it anymore. I absolutely do not see it anymore with, with the children. So, where are video games going? Well, they're going to the smart devices where people don't want to pay. I think I've addressed this before, but it's true. People don't want to pay. Because they grew up with a, a bratty, spoiled entitlement mentality that borderline Marxist, or is fat, flat out Marxism, where they think that everything is free and should just fall from the sky. Well, no, someone has to sit there and program them. Then you got other people, well, I want to be an indie game programmer. Well, good luck with that, because that ship has sailed, sunk, and has been discovered by James Cameron recently, so to speak, because it's that's done. Now there's going to th- that thing filtered out very quickly. Yes, okay, a person can still put their game up on Steam without the proper promotion or anything. It's not going to get any more views than my videos on YouTube. That's the honest truth. And television has that worse than ever. So goes the television, so goes other things. People are like, well, if I can't watch the movie on my phone or tablet, I'm not going to bother with it. And it's going to soon be phone. It's going to be completely the, the telephone. Excuse me, the cell phone, smartphone, whatever the fuck you want to call it. That's what they're going to watch everything on. That's where they're going to get all their entertainment. And no new entertainment is going to be created. And you could say this is probably a a, a non-purpose conspiracy or something. But I'm just stating the facts. I don't know if there's a conspiracy or not. I'm just saying what I'm seeing. I see people turning into hunchbacks, sitting around all day long on their dumbass phones, texting away or constantly refreshing their fuckbooks 
because they are idiots. Get out there and do something for a change. Be useful, but they don't want to be useful. They don't even know what it is to live life. They don't know what victory is. They don't know what success is. They don't know anything. I mean, they don't even want to fuck. My gosh, the best feeling in the world is sex. And they don't want to do it? Holy cow, I got to give porn stars some credit here. At least they're going around doing it. The ones who are posting things uh, up on the internet, I got to give them credit too. Bunch of perverts, sure. But hey, isn't that the way it goes? They're actually out doing something. They're doing something remotely useful. We need more people to be farmers. We need more people to be agriculture. We need more people to maintain dams. We need more people to maintain power infrastructure. We need construction workers and so forth and so on. And it's not happening. And this has nothing to do with white, black, green, purple, Mexican, American, Canadian, or anything like that. This goes through everybody. You got the essays sitting there playing on their phone at the Little Caesar waiting for pizza as much as you have the white girl sitting there playing on her phone at the Little Caesar. And who's going to make the Little Caesar pizza after a while? And who's going to make this and who's going to make... That's happening faster. I had one guy tell me, oh, the gangs are going to take over. The gangs, the gangs. What, what is this? The Crips uh, movie or something? A hood movie? That's what I'm trying to get at. A hood movie from the 19, early 1990s? No. No, the... the do they even have gangs anymore? I, I guess there's gangs. I, I don't know. But after these kids hit a certain point, the majority of them just sit there playing on their phones. The best thing to do is get rid of them. Get rid of the smartphones. Get rid of the cell phones. My goodness. You know, the, the, the best thing to do is just get an answering machine. I'm, I'm not joking. Not a voicemail message I can check in with. Just an answering machine, and, and that's it. And I get home, I check it, see if someone's called or not, left me a message. Ooh. I like that idea, I really do. And, you know, there's just so much that was established that, that Steve Jobs wrecked with the iPhone. And television is it, and it's not coming back. Video games are next. They can't see it. Comic books have already been decimated. What you see now is life support. You know, those those IDD, IDD, IDW, Disney comics, if you even knew they existed, yeah. That, that's the last grasp of a dying industry. You know, think about why Margot Robbie is Harley Quinn. Think about it. It doesn't really take a... A, a lot. Nobody saw Suicide Squad for that. They wanted to see Margot Rob, Robbie as Harley Quinn. That's all it comes down to. Everywhere I go, there's Harley Quinn merchandise, right? You know, so it doesn't matter that Suicide Squad bombed or whatever. It's people want to see Margot Robbie. I could film a movie of Margot Robbie sitting in a chair doing absolutely nothing but reading a magazine and sipping some wine for two hours. And it would probably be a huge move. I throw that out there now because well, this podcast is copyrighted. I'm against copyright. But this podcast does get a copyright. Which is, it's an arm and a leg and an arm and a leg to keep up on all this stuff. Because I gotta, I gotta actually make ten physical copies of this and mail, mail one physical copy to the Library of Congress. Anyways, I'm not going to explain copywriting. It, it's a pain in the ass. Okay, you didn't know that. <laughs> a lot of people don't do copyrights properly. There's no such thing as a poor man's copyright. I, I think I'll address that right now. I've always heard from the, the mass ignorant that go ahead, mail something to yourself, or write it down on a piece of paper, and put a date and time and all this stuff on it, and, and it's your idea. You can have a stand up in court. No, that's not how it works. You have to actually physically try to file you have to file a patent, trademark, or a copyright at an appropriate time, any time after you've had the idea and kept it confidential or between the group that you're developing. Then you go ahead, send it in, and it's awarded to you if it does not infringe or is not too general of an idea. That's how copyright, trademark, and patents work. I actually know the system inside and out. I taught myself the system when I was 11 years old, and I've kept up on the updates on how to do it. I'm totally with the EFF about how intrusive copyright patents are. You know, 
was a very quick lesson on how that works. Now, in the last 20 minutes here, because I only want to do an hour, and uh, here, here it goes for the last 20 minutes. Here's what I've got. Death Wish. No, I don't have a Death Wish. I'm talking about the movie series Death Wish with Charles Bronson. When I was a kid, and uh, this is probably means I'm probably going to lose all my memories, and these are going to be the only records of my memories I'm ever going to have when I get older. When I was a child, I went ahead and I was walking through the uh, video store, and I remember that Death Wish 5 had just come out. I was looking at the videotapes, and I'm like, oh, look, the action movie section. There's Death Wish, and Death Wish 2, and Death Wish 3, and Death Wish 4, The Crackdown, and Death Wish 5. I'm like, how many Death Wish movies they made? Well, at the same time, I thought there was 1,558 James Bond movies, so... You know, there's your answer right there. Um, and I was allowed to see these. Plus, I saw... I was taken to Death Wish 3 and Death Wish 4 in the theater as a child. Don't ask. Um, I saw a lot of... I saw a lot of action movies <laughs> as a child. <laughs> Robocop. And... Yeah, Death Wish. I... I must say, you know, I, I didn't know what the first movie was. I was confused by it. I thought that um, this is the way it looks to me. Uh, because I only saw bits and pieces of the first movie whenever KBBU or KRLR would air it. And so I think KFBT aired it once. So I'd catch bits and pieces of it, or maybe it'd air on TBS or USA or TNT. Um, I thought, I didn't know who the guy was, you know, I just called him Charles Bronson. We all know the character's name was Paul Kersey. And I thought that he was like a dirty, hairy kind of thing. He was either a cop or whatever, because I thought that he was like in some kind of information office, not an architect office or whatever. Uh, surprisingly, when I finally watched the whole movie, and I couldn't tell you when, uh, I would definitely say I was in my 20s. But when I finally watched the whole movie of Death Wish, I was impressed about how gritty and powerful the movie actually was. Uh, or or still is. The Death Wish 2, 3, whatever, uh, my memories came back, and I remember watching these as children, or as a child. And yeah, um, absolutely... These are the beginning of the super action movie. That's what... Death, Death Wish 2, 3, and 4. I, I guess 5 can be considered super action, but truthfully, 5 looks like what it is. Um, there was a glut starting, I would say, in 88 or 89 of these filmed on videotape for cable and, um, when I mean cable, um, I'm possibly thinking, like, the, the, the houses were called, um, usually called something like Trimark or Something like that. And they would make, uh, what do they call them? Mock busters. Mock busters. I'm trying to say block. Mock. Blockbuster, mock buster. It's really, it's easier written than said. They'd make these mock busters, or whatever. I mean, like, what is Death Wish 5? I mean, it, it, it has, it, it looks like a Z grade movie through and through. I have nothing against anybody who worked on the film, because I actually do enjoy the film to a degree, but it certainly, certainly is not even up to the caliber of Death Wish 4, which went for the theatrical release. Uh, Chuck Norris even got in on some of these bad movies towards the end of the 90s, I guess, or early 21st century. Um, so many of these bad movies... Uh, came out like this. I mean, Highlander the Source. The, I want to say a recent example, but it's been about 10, 12 years. I think 10. I think it's been about 10 years since Highlander the Source came out. Or, like, the renegade cut of Highlander 2 and it was redone. I mean, I give Russell McKay, McKay uh, credit uh, for trying to salvage what he could of the film, but I mean, yeah. There, there's that so forth and so on. And Death, Death Wish 5 was, was very cheaply made. I know I'm stuttering and stammering. I'm sorry about that. But Death Wish 5 was... was uh, cheaply made. I do enjoy Death Wish uh, 
three the most, and four I, I do enjoy it as well. And I love it when a channel just wants to show Deathwish all day long. I do enjoy the Dirty Harry film, but I, I have to say, like, um, I enjoy the first Dirty Harry, though I do acknowledge its darker aspect. I'd rather watch The Shootist with John Wayne, if that's the case. Uh, you, you can figure out what I mean by that. You're a genius. On the other hand, though, then there's Magnum Force. Well, I do enjoy it, and it is a darker film. It ain't great. And it's not a bad movie at all. It's just, it is, it is what it is. Um, after that is The Enforcer. As a child, I enjoyed The Enforcer, and I think it still brings up a lot of good points, problems that face police departments throughout the country to this day. Um, I'm obviously, I'm not expecting an inspector from Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department to use a bazooka. I don't even know if they have inspectors. But I'm not expecting one to use a bazooka at a national park to take out a bunch of hippies. I don't, I don't think that shit's possible. But I, I do think that the Enforcer has some valid points. I don't like Sudden Death. Um, it just doesn't click for me. Though it has its moments, and there's nothing wrong with those moments at all. But I don't like Sudden Death. It's not a very good movie. Uh, in my opinion, for what I'm looking for. Again, it is a good movie. It's just not a good movie to me. And I love the Deadpool, but then, isn't the Deadpool kind of like an offshoot of Death Wish? It's, it's a, it's, I, okay, I know that Razor Fist said that Sudden Impact is Death Wish meets Dirty Harry, but truthfully, the Deadpool looks more like a, a big budget Death Wish. And that's essentially what it is, I guess, to a degree. Um, other action movies, you know, there's Die Hard and all that stuff. But Death Wish and Dirty Harry are, are particular standouts. They both had sequels made in the 70s, and then their last sequels made in the 80s. And obviously Death Wish 5 was made in 1991. But everything just kind of... It's like friend, friendly... Familiarity, that's the word. Familiarity. And uh, that that's uh, that's pretty good stuff, in my opinion. And I, I mean stuff... Um, oh, shit. It's a bad sign if I'm saying pretty good stuff. Face it, folks. In a few decades, I'm not going to remember my name. I'm going to be... Uh, I'm going to be a drooling vegetable or something that's just, like, sitting there staring at the television. Um, I'm not going to get into why I think this is happening to me. I'm going to keep talking about stuff. I guess I'm encouraging... You know what? Um, just go to Razor Fist Rageaholic uh, YouTube channel. Watch his videos on action movies and video games and stuff. Yeah, I'm actually pointing you... <laughs> it's almost the end here, and I'm, I'm pointing you to someone else's. I, I don't get paid by him or nothing. I just... I just like his channel. But, um, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I... Oh, well. Um, wow, okay, my brain has had a complete meltdown here. So, um... It's coffeeforbinky at gmail.com. C-O-F-F-E-E, -E, the number four, B-I-N-K-Y at gmail.com. You know what it is? I've, I've been up since two in the morning. I'm recording this at two in the afternoon. I need to go take a nap. That, that's, that's what it is. So, you want to contribute to the Patreon or whatever like that? Oh, wow. I'm just, I'm just flat out tired. Um, if you object to anything I say, I don't care. If you like whatever I said, I don't care. Um, because basically, I want you to critically think. So, if you're offended, that's critically thinking. If you blindly agree, there's no critical thought there. <laughs> and, uh, whatever, right? I mean, I don't know. Maybe I should read the work, works of Rene Descartes or something like that. Or, or um, Candy by Voltaire. 
Yeah. Okay. So, email. Well, see, I already did that. I already did that. Yeah. Okay. It sounded like Colombo or something. 